Hello, welcome to another episode of the Big 40 Tiger Cast. Bit of a, a somber start to, to the show after the, the news today of the tragic passing of Shane Tuck, who was a, a great Tiger man. Uh, CB17 and TIG71 joining us as always. Welcome, guys. Hey, guys. G'day. Um, g'day, listeners. What a sad day. Very sad. Just to give a, a brief recap of Tucky's career with us, he played 173 games, 74 goals, wore the, the number 21 and was, um, it was just one of those blokes that you knew what you were going to get with him every single time you, you took the field, didn't you? He was cracking in contest after contest. In, in a lot of ways, the way he played back then is uh, heavily resembles how we play now. And imagine having a, a fit Tucky in your side with the way we play the game now. Yep, agree. Agree. Yeah, yeah, spot on. And the biggest thing uh, for me is he said, and that I'll never lose sight of, the reason we've got success now is in due to players like Tuck, Jackson, who sheltered Dustin Martin, Trek Conchin, you know, all the, Brett Delito was a part of it too, you know. They were like the guard that saw all of our guns. Edwards, another one that they they sheltered through. Jack Rewald, another one. Um, they had a big part to play for protecting the younger guns that we've got now and they wouldn't be, um, no doubt, they wouldn't be the players they um, are now if they didn't have people like Tuck to learn from. He's an absolute legend in my mind. Yeah, and just a, a complete workhorse. And, you know, you can see all, all the messages on the socials that, of how much of a great person he was off the field as well. Uh, very humble and, and down to earth and always made time for the fans at the family days and clinics and stuff like that. He was just uh, one of those really great guys that I'm sure everyone loved playing alongside. So... Um, did you guys have any sort of stories or memories of favourite yeah. moments of Tucky playing? Yeah, I've got one. I've got a cracker. Uh, probably one of the best days of the footy I've ever had was probably one of the worst ones that Tucky ever had. Um, I'm talking about our last ever game at a- Amy Stadium. So back in 2013, um, Port Adelaide versus Richmond. So I actually flew to that one. And um, for those, I'll, I'll set the scene. If you, for those who been, have been to Amy Stadium, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. This ground was... It was weird. It was, like a, it was like a ground in amongst a suburban area with a shopping centre next to it. And you're talking like when you go to the toilets, it was that old concrete concrete urinal. So it had like 100 years of piss smell in it. It was just – it was a pretty old stadium, <laughs> Amy. And anyway, um, this is just when the Tigers were just starting to – you know, obviously we played the finals that year. We were just starting to ascend under Dimmer's leadership. It was just starting to click. And um, – we went over there and we, we absolutely clipped them. But the problem for Taki, so it was a great win over there. The problem for Taki was he actually busted, he actually busted the back of his shoulder. For those who remember the game, I don't want really you call that part in the back of your, <coughs> on your back anyway. He had that busted in um, the third quarter and he played the game out with a busted shoulder. It literally, it literally was taped and he was playing with one arm. So you think about Jack Graham, his heroics. It was this was bigger than that. And he, yeah, I can't remember if he attended some ruck. We had big Orange Stevenson running around, but yeah, Tucky played with one arm, and it was the most one of the most courageous things I've ever seen. And the flip side of that was also uh, there was only two taxi ranks to get out of that shithole. And I remember queuing up, and in you know, amongst the sea of people, and we had to get back to the planes to fly back. And taxi pulls up, and I see Gary March and Malcolm Speed. I said, you boys look like you need a cab. You want one? Yeah. yeah. And we jumped the queue because people knew who they were. And I, I grabbed a taxi ride back to the airport with um, Gary March and Malcolm Speed at the time and then actually caught the plane back with the players. So it was a pretty good day all up. But poor old Tucky played with one arm with a smashed shoulder and that was unbelievable. Yeah, legend. Oh, my, I've got two real quick ones. Um, the first one for me, I, was, I used to work for Vodafone um, and they used to sponsor Port Adelaide. Um, and I'll never forget, I was in the corporate box. I think it was at the G, but it might have, might have been Amy. But I'm sure it was at the G, but it was a contest. See, what I loved about Tucky was he wasn't the most skillful player. See, for me, skill's secondary to how I appreciate Richmond. What, and this probably um, – and speaking to a few Tiger supporters today, you know, my mates and stuff, we were reminiscing about Tucky a little bit. Um, most Richmond supporters are very feral, right, on our side, and we're very feral on our side if we lose, not because if we lose, if we give 100%, if we're just not good enough. We we rip in a, we rip in the team when we know they've got um, petrol still in the tank. Um, so with Tucky, what I used to love about Tucky and watching him play was um, he would he might not be the skillfulest player, but there, no one on the ground would outwork him. Um, 
and he was as tough as nails. And I remember he was in Port, against Port Adelaide. And it's funny, um, uh, this one, uh, he was chasing um, – hopefully you guys remember this. I'm sure we'll – I'm sure it was the G, but we're kicking to the right um, – to the punt road end. So this is in the punt road pocket. Tucky's um, chasing a loose ball up into the up into the pocket and he's, he's not as fast as the two port forwards or defenders that are that are running um, to go get the ball. And he's sort of like in, the, in between them. Anyway, he gives his last ditch – gasp and he like lunges he literally throws himself at the ball um and he grabs it and so he's now on the ground these two guys are over him and he gets up he pushes one out of him and then he runs and he, he gets up pushes shoves one out of the side and then runs back into the four pocket and passes the ball off i've forgotten who he passed it off to and even if he scored but i remember it so vividly because i was on the wing um on the on the lower pocket lower pocket area and I just thought, fuck it, how great is this? And I had a couple of the flogs that I was with the work um, thing with, and it was just like, you know, it was so good. It was just so good to see it. Um, and the other one is, um, I don't know if you ever remembered it, but it, it really stuck with me. I took my cousin, uh, Maritza, his father had just passed. It was a mad Richmond nut. And we were playing um, we were playing St Kilda, I believe, um, I think it might have even been that game where um, the St Kilda coach said we got beaten by uh, – we were the better side, even though they lost. Um, and, um, and yeah, it, I was giving it to Everett, like giving it like you wouldn't believe. And I got a pretty loud voice. And um, I swear Tucky laughed, looked at me dead in the face and had a, a, just a full belly laugh with some of the stuff I said. So they're my two memories <laughs> of it. So – uh, I won't go into what I said to Everett. That will be for another podcast. I'm not in the mood, really. But um, it was just, yeah, he's just a workhorse. He's a warrior. People call him that. And the biggest thing for me is um, just reading a quote off Wallace, um, who coached all of his 99 games um, that he played with Richmond. Um, the best the best thing someone can say to you is, um, is something like this, you know. Uh, he was not the best player you've ever seen, but the ep- epitome of honesty and um, the epitome I don't even know how to pronounce it. Epitomine. Epitome. Epitome. Yeah, there you go. The epitome of honesty and the epitome of what people should love about their football clubs. And that's the true, no true words being spoken. Yeah, very well summed up. So, yeah, our thoughts uh, go out to Tuck's family and friends in the Richmond Footy Club itself, um, who will all be doing it tough. Like As we sort of spoke about off air, a lot of our senior players will have played uh, quite a few games with Tucky, so it's going to be interesting to see how they handle this tough time but uh yeah thinking of all of them and, and just make sure that if anyone out there is struggling with anything make sure you reach out if, if this affects you um speak speak up don't be afraid to do that and yeah we just wish his family all the best yeah good well said all right well um we did play a game the previous week against uh north melbourne fellas and i must admit i was probably the most nervous about this game out of the three of us but we did come away with a nice little win uh, 54 points against the Kangas, dominating display it was, and moving up to fourth in the ladder, which was a, a pretty good outcome, <coughs> given that we were written off two weeks ago by everyone. Yeah. And what, look, it could have easily been over 100 points. We, we had 22 scoring shots at their 13, so I think 11-11. So if we had converted a couple of sodas, yeah, we could have easily beaten them by 100. Look, what I loved about it, the biggest thing that took away from me, and I commented it on the forums um, I think it was at um, after the first quarter. We finally uh, Richmond. What set us apart from every other club the last three years is that when pushed, we had that extra gear um, that a lot of clubs don't have. And all year we have not shown it, but we showed it um, this game. Um, so that tells me that in, um, fitness wise, and we're finally caught up. Um, our skills will come. Um, in a part, I, I blame our timing. We're always playing at night so in winter, which is dewy ball. So the skills aren't clean, but they're a lot better in the last um, in the last three weeks. So that we're starting to adapt to that. But yeah, we were just brutal. Um, we hunted them. Um, we um, chased them. We did not allow them to play their way. And uh, another mate of mine said to me, "Oh yeah, but it was north." And and I sort of said, "Well, let's." Say this: Did we allow them to play their natural game from this get go? We didn't. We said we dictated terms. We dictated how the game was going to be. Um, we forced them. We forced them wide at every every forward fifty entry. It was wide, um, and um, it was just fantastic to see. That's why they couldn't get into the four fifty in the first quarter when they're fresh, 
because all players are trying, you know, don't kick it straight to the pocket, try to get it into more of a scoring opportunity. And we were just defended so elitely, um, they couldn't do it. Um, and then we'll get that perfect turnover. And then we started finally getting the conversion right from turnover to, you know, a scoring opportunity. It was just brilliant to see. So that was good. It was a good win. It was a very good win. CB, your take on it all? Uh, as, as has been said, it was our first real game where we actually really went after the opposition, like hunted them, didn't give them. It felt like every contest that we had an extra two people on the ground, didn't it? Like we had yeah. just numbers everywhere. And that was really pleasing. And, and again, yeah, we know North were missing some players, but on the same token, we were missing a hell of a lot of players as well. And those young blokes that stepped up, we told you two weeks ago, get just get excited for nothing else. Get excited for the young blokes to get their opportunities because, you know, we, we want to see them play. And it's just remarkable the fact it doesn't matter who goes out. We just seem to have this knack of bringing someone in and it just seems to work pretty seamless. And, you know, we're going to get to the players, but um, <coughs> Egg Melissa Smith was just amazing. Oh, that yeah, game off fantastic. our back line. Look, the young, young fellow from Mildura, magnificent game. And, um, yeah, even took a bit of a, not a hanger, but, you know, took a pretty good grab in there. But his, his, um, his performance, 23, 23 disposals, 83%, 471 metres gained. Dare I say it, that was wooly like Can I say something too? All the kids from last year that we saw, because we saw Egg last year, we saw Bolter last year, we saw Shy last year, they've all played better now. This year, didn't they play last year? And that shows, that's a credit to our development. Um, obviously, Shy Bolton had to go back and learn some of the midfield craft. And he's come back and he showed that, like, 19 disposal at 84% efficiency. Well, I loved his 10 contested possessions, but more importantly, was seven score involvement. So what that tells me is he um, he got the ball, in. he was smart around the contest, got the ball, but he hurt you. He got others into the game, and that's what you want for a midfielder to get others into the game to generate a score. Um, and 491 metres gained for a mid, that's a lot. Yeah, um, we, uh, we, we joked last week about the heat map of the Sydney Swans. I took a look at Bolton's heat map from the game, and it was <laughs> the, the centre circle was literally glowing red. He yeah. just did all his damage in the middle of the ground. It was unbelievable. And that's creator. That's being a creator, and we've been missing that. The, someone be uh, the ability to create. And um, I, I reckon he's a starting mid now. I reckon if he keeps this as his baseline, which is a big ask, if he can prove his tank, you put him with Cochin and Prestia, um, Edwards, there's and then Shy Bolton, those four, there's a lot of there's a lot of X factor, there's a lot of grunt, and then plop in Dustin Martin. Um, and then you rotate on the sixth position, your Graham. It makes our sixth midfielder. Um, you get Lamberts, you got your Grahams. That's better than most other side six midfielder, if that makes any sense. You know is, what I mean? It's a brilliant. It, brilliant. Is is it just me, or when we're looking at these guys? <laughs> so I'm looking at I'm looking at Eggs right, and I'm, it's a big call. He's only a young fellow. He's only played a handful of games, but you look at him going, well, shit. There's our next Basher Hawley. Then you're watching Shy, uh, Shy do his work, and you're going, well, geez, there's our next um, Shane Edwards. Yep. Then you're watching Bolter, and you're going, geez, the way there's he's going about it, there's, there's the next, next round. Is, yep. it just, is it just me, or is it just uncanny <laughs> what's unfolding before us? I just, I think we're just noticing um, an elite development program. Um, we've, got devel- we've got major stars. So obviously it's going to make sense that Rance has put Bolter under his wing. You know, or he's been training, as he's been training, he's been seeing Rance and what he does. Um um, you've got Lepic, who um, you know was a big part of Rance's career, is training Bolter, which is fantastic. And and Bolter's just so composed now. And one thing for me, I think he's so disciplined now to play the Richmond way. We've lost that weapon. Hopefully he pulls it out. As yeah, I almost feel grows. like we've reined him in too much. Like yeah. I know he did a couple of big handballs, but I want to see him launch it. <laughs> and, you know, there was there was this one there was this one passage to play. He turned it over, right? Thank God they didn't score. But he did a handball and. He handballed it to the opposition. But what I loved about it, he regathered the ball. So he, he didn't just stop his head. He, he charged after him, realised he made a mistake because his athleticism. Gets the ball back after tackling the bloke. Then, unfortunately, handballs it straight away. So he obviously had to fix the idea, right, this is what my job is. This is what I need to do. And he's trying to say his discipline to it as much as he can, even though it created a turnover there. That was really pleasing for me because that means he's fully invested in getting better, playing to the program, listening to his coaches, um, I think once he's confident about his position, now hopefully this makes sense. 
once he's confident that his position's secure, that he truly believes, you know what, I, and this I reckon this was took it with Ranch as well. Once he knew I got all these abilities, listen to coaches, follow the coach's way. Once I know I'm cemented in the side, I'm not going to get dropped. Then you will start to see his natural flair come up back yeah. again. Where instead of doing a handball, he might just roost at sixty meters. Well, you know what a, I mean? He's a hundred meter player. Like, isn't he? Yeah, because he won't be dropped because he'll be he'll be settled in. Then that for that day, I can't wait to see it. But can I? Waved a flag for one player that's been... We sort of touched on him last week, and I want to touch on him again, is Rioli, right? Um, a lot of people are on him. He's still not doing enough, da-da-da-da-da. Uh, Hardwick in his press have highlighted Dustin Martin, right, and saying Dustin Martin's his role's changed. He's being a leader on the field, sacrificing his own game for the betterment of the side, right? And we want to talk about that field kick in a second. But I reckon Rioli's doing it as well. Because if you compare, and, and thank you for bringing the stats up too, uh, Michaels, but um, he had 24 pressure acts, uh, which was a team high. So if you think, and, and Lambert was 20 and Dusty was 19. And even Lambert, um, they're obviously, he's been earmarked as, a, he, he's a leader. He has to, he has to, if it wasn't for Rioli doing his pressure acts, they wouldn't allow George to switch roles and go in the back line, which was an example I actually quite liked. I love him. Yeah, people worry about George's expo- um, um, his disposal, but fuck me, he can get the ball. But no, the thing is, with George in the back line, it, it, it wasn't a positional move. It was actually when North had the ball between him, Camden, and Caddy when he was not injured. They were the ones yeah. dropping back to fill in the hole in front of Ben Brown. So he was just being yeah. an extra number. And um, yeah, yeah, it worked out okay. Yeah, perfect. But it's. Um, I hope they persist with it. But it, no, look, Rioli, um, he did enough to get another game. Um, I think, yeah, I think he's coming back into form and 24 press tracks was fantastic. Overall, look, I was really happy. The kids, like, like we all said three weeks ago when all the injuries started happening, just enjoy the ride with the kids and they haven't let us down. They have not no, let and, us down at all. And I'll just say one one point. Um, once again, really, really smart decision-making by the Richmond hierarchy. When we had to do the uh, off-field cuts, the fact that the Richmond kept all their coaches... Yep. We're seeing the dividends of that right now with the development of these kids and seeing them come in. So we are – obviously, different clubs had different ways on how they structured their off-field. But the fact that we kept the coaches, I think you're seeing the benefits of that right now as well with the way we're playing and what we're doing. And what I'm wrapped about, we defended the um, uh, Queensland ground like we defended the G. That I, I, It was hard – and I'm saying this by watching it on TV, but that's what it looked like to me, right? Um in the realize how we we closed down all the spikes and it was game like if you're at the G that's what we normally do that's why we're so bloody hard to play against um, so they've put us they've put us in Queensland I hope they keep us there because I reckon we're going to continue winning the longer we stay in Queensland so um, yeah no it's um it was no it was great to see it I think it's just we're starting to see the fruits of all the hard work that we did at the beginning of the um, with the heavy training loads and all that sort of stuff. We're starting to see the fruit of it, so it's good. I think the biggest thing as well is the being up in Queensland is they can train together as a team in its entirety. We haven't That's been right. able to do that here, and obviously, as we all know, a big part of our game is based on connection, um, and but not being able to train as a group would impact that to, to some level, even though they've been playing together for many years. But being able to redo that now, I think, starting to play its part as well, which is which has been good. And uh, so the other player I want to bring up as well was Jaden <laughs> Short. I know he's been under the microscope for various people over the years, but 21 disposals at 81% and 593 metres gained. I thought he had a, a good game. Um, but I think he's actually starting to actually defend a bit better as the weeks go on too. That's been his big knock as his actual defending. But uh, we're starting to see a bit more of that. Yeah, well, no, he should, should have had two goals as well. Yeah. We missed some sodas, didn't we? Poor oh, Artsy. Yeah. He, he, Arts, he, yeah. He was, he, all that was was a, a, a kid trying to get his first goal and just shooting yeah. himself with, the, with just, the set shots. I just, again, you've seen my posting on the board. I'm claiming Jake Arts. I'm claiming Broad, and I'm claiming Camden, and I'm claiming Arts. Jake the Snake Arts. Get on board. Once he Play got that first train. goal, he just looked like a, an uncaged beast. Yeah, I was wrapped for him when he kicked that first goal. I was, you know, really well deserved. Really well deserved. He goes in. He's as hard as the cat's head. He, he, he doesn't mind getting in there and um, bashing and crashing and get the ball. So, no, good on him. No, it's great. And you wanted to, to touch on, we can't not talk about it, but Dusty's yeah. sexual yeah, sublime kick inside 50. Oh. 
It was oh, ridiculous. <laughs> people are fucking... Apparently Petrarca. Did you hear that uh, actually... Yeah, no, I'm... you can't. Stop. What? <laughs> That's next week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll, yeah. yeah. we'll, we'll burn him next week. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Dusty, that was, a, that was a good kick. But with Dusty's game, I, I was actually quite shocked when I read that he had uh, the third highest pressure. It was 19. Because yeah. to me, that, that's that been a big part of his game that's been missing. If he's not going to be doing a lot offensively, then he needs to do something defensively. So that's a really pleasing stat to see. Yeah, I think he just knew, because we have not got um, we have not got press down, we haven't got um, Cochin. Cochin does a lot of the defensive work um, as a midfielder. That's why he always sparks us. Yeah. Um, and Dusty's, Dusty's forced to do that role. But I'm going to fucking talk about Dusty's Martin fine, if I'm allowed to. And people writing us off. I'm going to go. If I've, I've just got to get it off my chest. First of all, but before I start, who was that fucking bearded umpire? Does anyone know his name? That was that one umpire. Everyone would know if you watch the game. He had a beard. Not sure no. it was. I don't know if he's. A, he must be a North Melbourne coach. He he was. I don't know. Listeners, you can tweet me your response. But I'm trying to be unbiased here. But this guy was absolutely corrupt. Every day, I, oh, he was. Look, I'm sorry, but the man was corrupt. Every time he tried to get North into the game, um, when North kicked those two goals, and then every time he started clearing in the defence, he would blow his whistle. Every see the thing is, I don't mind if you pay North a free kick, as long as you pay that same action to us if they do it to us, and that's what did not happen in our game. We were it was so farcical. I think it was something twenty to seven at one stage before they did the inevitable, let's even it up a little bit so it doesn't look so obvious. But that guy in a beard, is a, it was a fucking crook. So I hope I find out who his name is because I'll write a stern letter. Trust me, I'll write a stern letter. But he wasn't the other guy that let me down here. Dusty was getting scragged by uh, McDonald, right? And first of all, McDonald, shave your beard. You don't have the head or body to carry your beard, son. You're like a 14-year-old boy. You know what I mean? It, you, look, you look like a chick with a mo. That's how odd you look, um, and that's no disrespect to all the women there that might have mo's. But you, you, if you if you're a woman with a mo, you're looking odd. I'm just going to tell you that, and I say that with love and respect. But he looked like a woman with a mo. That's how odd he looked to me. He hasn't got the he hasn't got the carry to wear it to carry a beard. Particularly that grizzly Adams fucking. I've been out in the wilderness for 15 years, you know, sending you know little bombs off in the mail type of look. Right, that he's I trying thought- to carry. I thought he had a gunfight to go to in Glen oh, Glen oh. with his brother and uh, yeah. go, go shoot at some jacks while he put yeah. some uh, metal armor on. Yeah, that's what he's hoping to look like, but he's too effeminate to carry it off. But but seriously, he's hugging Dustin Martin, right? So the ball is going to the centre, I think it was, or about to be balled up, right? He's hugging Dustin Martin, so his back's behind, the, he's facing the play. So he's bear hugging Dusty. It's that's illegal, Dusty. You can see it in the vision, right? looks at the umpire and he mouths these words, and I'm not deaf, but I can lip read. What the fuck is basically said, right, to the umpire? And the umpire's staring right at him, seeing McDonald hugging him, scragging him, pulling his jumper, going with those little kicks with his legs, and Dusty's still in his bear hug going, hold on, what the fuck? And the umpire's staring at him, and Dusty's just gone, oh, you're not going to obviously do anything. And then, you know, obviously turns McDonald around like a rag doll and throws in the little little push punch, whatever you want to call it. And he, Dusty gets pinged. Now, all I want to say is if the umpire did his fucking job, it would never have got to that stage. He should have blown a free kick to Dustin for holding straight away, right, to clear it up because it's off the ball. He should have paid the free kick and then McDonald would have started learning his lesson and would have let it go. See, this is the thing. I don't mind taggers. But if and there's some good quality taggers that do it like um, even though um, oh, you know that bloke uh, from Geelong he looks like the mask um, Ling from the kid you know the bloke in the mask oh Lingy because <laughs> he looks like to me because they're both redheads ringers Lingy was a good player that became an elite tagger right because he had the skill to do it I'm gonna cop an on Michael on Twitter anyway you told me, CB told me to say it sorry guys I just no, you know, oh, you, it's you like rash. when he told me just talking, CB just DM me to say it because he doesn't have the balls or the kindness to do it um, but um, McDonald but there's other taggers like McDonald who aren't any good right it's like it's like um, the ball from um, GWS I don't rate him. 
they just negate. Anyone can negate. Man, I'm I'm a portly 48 year old. I reckon I could negate a, a star player if I just sat on their back all day. Um, so umpires need to protect the, the the player, and that was a travesty. That's what's wrong with the game. What happened to Dustin Martin? And can I just add on? How the fuck did they get three other fines? Dylan Grimes, that was didn't even fucking hit the guy, and that was just an accident. Um, short, I didn't even see it. I don't know. I'm well done, short. If you because you're not the type of dude that you know if you whack some bloke, didn't even see it. Um, and who else did they ping? Arts. Uh, Arts. 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 Get look, this hung us at the contest, and but that it, it, it was just a it's just a raw. And how did nobody from North? And this is what I want to say. I saw on Twitter. All these North supporters. Oh, look at the current... Look, first of all, that kid was courageous. Right? Dead set. Courageous. But let's be realistic, yeah? That was a free to lynch. He blocked his space. He, he ran in to block his space. And it was a front-on contact. That should have been a free kick to lynch. Um, that's true. That's how I see it. <laughs> and I'm being unbiased. Gosh, you know me. I'm biased, you know? Uh, no black and, red, uh, black and yellow glasses here, mate. And hopefully you know what I did there. Um, but anyway. There we go. Yeah, that should have been a free kick to Lynch. No, I think all... the, um, the dusty one, I reckon, actually, I do believe you're right. They should have paid that first one and it wouldn't have happened. But it wouldn't have happened. It is what it is. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, Dusty has to keep dealing with it. And, and I hope he can keep his call if it happens again because we can't really afford to lose him at this point in time. But um, it, yeah, if they pay him, it'll stop straight out. And sometimes they do from the start of the game. But... Yeah, when they don't, then Oppo defenders just get away with, they like, start pushing that boundary a little bit further. Um, yeah, then it gets out of control. But how can you find Grimes? That's like finding Bambi. Mind well, you. Got, it's more more importantly, how do you get reported for it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, that report, it's just, they did everything they could to try to throw us off our game. It's, nah, that's it. I don't want to get my tinfoil hat out. Like, I, I don't want this to go on for two hours, but uh, yeah, no, nah, something smelling in Chinatown. All right, we'll watch this space and see if it keeps reoccurring. Um, this week, folks, CB is going to give the, the bloodbath a miss. We're going to come back and do a, a retribution one next week, just in light of the, the, the tuck situation. We, we want to, yeah, sort of it's it's harder to be funny and outlandish when something like in real life does happen and it does affect everyone. So we're, we're going to park the bloodbath for the week. Um, but we are going to push on to some listener questions because quite a few come through. And, and this week's probably been the hardest batch of questions we've had come through, to be honest, because there's a lot of selection issues, issues that are about to hit us square between the eyes. So uh, TIG71, you've got the first one from RT. If Hawley and Edwards were to join the hub in a month's time and the Egg and Bolton were still playing at the level they are currently are playing at, would you replace them with the experienced duo? Hawley, No. It depends on the level of performance. If they're matching what Hawley and Edwards can do, I'd keep definitely Dez and Bolton still in the side. But I will say this, because Edwards can play midfield, I'd find a space for Edwards. Edwards is our Brahman. He can play half forward, half back, midfield. He's got those more strings to his bow than just Hawley, who's just half back flanker. So if, if um, Egg is still performing to the level um, and Hawley was in, I'll just get Hawley to get hungry and train his ass off to force Egg out. Um, but with Edwards, I reckon you can have Edwards and Bolton both in the side at the same time. Yeah, agree. Uh, next one was for you as well, T71, from The Tale. Uh, is T71 able to give us a COVID update from the front line? And <laughs> also, how good is it seeing our newer players in the side being better performers? Uh, also good to see people that love to knock us oh, going yes. into hiding. That's how you know we're going well. Well, well said, Tail. Well said to Tail. Um, look, first of all, just wear a fucking mask. Right, that's that's the. I know it's hot. If you wear glasses, the trick is actually I'll do this. My wife taught me how to do this. Um, if you wear glasses, guys, ladies and gents, and you've got a mask and you're not wearing a mask because your glasses fog up, right? That means that you haven't got your mask on properly. All you do is put your mask on. Once your mask is over your nose, pinch the bridge of your nose, right? With the obviously through the mask, then put your glasses over the top of your mask. Your mask, your glasses won't fog up. Right, so there's a there's a tip. Uh, also, too, it's like I've always said, um, we've got to get the infection rate down. Um, best way we can do it is just put a mask on and don't do it for yourself. Even if you think this is a hoax or we're all sheeple, apparently that's a word now, all this crazy shit, wear a mask, do it for your mum, do it for your dad, do it for your, your grandma, your grandpa. 
right? Just in case you're wrong. So just stop being a selfish prick, put a mask on. Um, and um, as to you, what you other said, yeah, I, if you notice my tweet straight after the game, basically laughing at corns, yeah, you had corns, you had um, so many. And have you heard me call SEN on, um, <laughs> on the Saturday Arvo? Um, spoke to Wallace. They always have time for me, which is nice, but... Yeah, no. Nah, there's ever so plug many. The show when you get on SCN, I feel oh, like mate, you get I, a second mate, residency mate, there. No, I know. I try to. You know, they actually call me if I. They actually call me um, to get on sometimes too, which is you know a plug for myself. But um, no, look. Um, yeah, so many people wrote us off, and look, even our own supporters. If we look in, a, in the mirror, or go on the boards, any board, any message board, we were all doubting them too quickly, and we have a tendency to do that without knowing the full picture. I'm guilty of it. We, we turn on players, but that's uniquely passionate about us. But we always have an undercurrent that we know we can change. This media, they went off like, Lloyd, you fucking monkey. Corns, you impossible, Corns actually said. Impossible for a rich man to get into the eight. Impossible for us to get top four. Imp- we're done. He said they don't have the desire, too many injuries, and they can't play out our way from the MCG. We've smashed that. So far, we've won, what, three games away? On the trot. So, yeah, count us out at your peril. There's a reason why we want, we've won two of the last three flags. Absolutely. Yeah, don't write us off. We've been saying it all along. Uh, CB, the next three of you, they're all kind of all linked in, as you pointed out. So we're going to roll them all into one for one big answer. I'll read the question out individually first, though. So from Andrew Mock, it is, which of the recent additions to the side do you see holding their spots when, when we're at full strength? And who replaces Caddy this week? Uh, from Justin Flynn, who comes in for Caddy, Nash or Dow? And from Paul McLaren, hey lads, with Aspie returning, can he, Bolter, Grimes and Broad all play together in the back line? Personally, I think they can with Egg and Vlas as the smalls, short off the bench and through the wing. Rightio, um, we'll begin. So first of all, hello to Andrew. Justin Flynn, I actually know personally, and he is the most loveliest man. So Targa, if you're listening, I love you, man. And Paul McLaren, g'day. Um, Andrew, start off with yours. Of the recent additions, um, oh, you know, it's going to come down to form. As as the famous Mick Moldau says, a team picks itself. So, obviously, I think Cochin has to come in at some stage, and that will be a young bloke that makes his way. So, whether that's a Graham, um, that's probably the one I'm thinking that could make way for a guy like Cochin, depending on form. Um, naturally, it's like for like, you know, You'd imagine if Hooley is right to come back in, you would say Eggs goes out. That's just how it works. Uh, Edwards will come back in. But I guess the one thing on Edwards and Hooley, I'm not – I don't know. With, with this situation and, and us playing in hubs for an extended period of time, obviously it's a, it's a terrible situation to bash his face with his mother. Um, I can almost see him not making it back for a long time. So I think Eggs, if he's good enough, has a very long run at it. Um, and the same with uh, Edwards. I can see Edwards not returning to the team for a while. Uh, obviously, Nank, Soldo, those are the two that will be fighting for that spot because I think um, maybe a child is just so <laughs> worth persisting with. He's amazing. Um, who else is there? Oh, I, I just think at the moment, let's not look too far in. Let's not look too far ahead. What I would suggest is let's just enjoy the now and enjoy watching this young team absolutely. Um, go about it. Uh, as far as replacing Caddy this week, this will be sort of across the lines. I believe that it's just going to be Dave Asprey coming in. Now, Dim has already said that Cochin isn't playing this week, so he's automatically another week out. But I think Asprey will come in and Caddy out. And what I think will happen is our back line is now going to start to resemble uh, the fantastic structure that we saw in 2017. So I can see Dave Asprey going back to full-back, taking the gorillas. I can see Bolter becoming the Rance-like role at centre-half back, which then means Grimes gets freed up to be the lockdown player that he was in 2017. So those guys that get off the handle against this occasion, like a Cameron or whoever, Grimes gets to really focus and just destroy those blokes, which really, really excites me. And then from there, you've still got um, Brody, Short, Nick Vloston, Eggs, there's a range of blokes that we can rotate through that back line to keep it going. So, target to answer yours, I actually think that it's going to be Asprey. 
to come in, and there'll be a positional change within the team. So it could be it could be a, a broad that we've tried on the wing previously. He might go there, or it might be a Jack Graham. I don't know. Um, and that hopefully answers your question as well, Paul. So with um, Asprey returning, can he, Bolter, Grimes, Broad all play together in the back line? Yeah, I think they can because we won a flag with a similar structure in 2017. So I think all that is possible. So I hope that answers all your questions, guys, and thank you for the um, opportunity. Very good, CB. Yeah, I'm a fan of keep Bolter in the back line. I was once a fan of putting him on the wing, but I think we'd leave him in the one spot, let him concentrate, excel, and understand what we need him to do, um, and he'll just develop and grow. So hopefully we see that. Uh, I've got the next two, which are linked together. So the first one was from CJ. Should Rewalt be dropped for CCJ? He couldn't give any less at the moment, and it might help the zombies' development. And from Suffering Succotash, should Jack be rested? And if so, who comes in to play his key position forward role? Um, I'm not sure if it's so much Rewalt should be dropped. I think he needs to make a decision similar to what Gary Ablett uh, has done recently. And if he... Jack has to go home or wants to go home or not to be with um, his wife and, and kid because she's obviously pregnant as well. So no one would begrudge him. Um, I think the thing that's thrown Jack off was that obviously the players committed to moving to the hub and then a day or two later, the Victorian lockdown happened for another six weeks. So now, you know, no one can go and help his wife with the day-to-day stuff to help get through this last part of the pregnancy. Uh, I'm in a similar situation. So my wife's 33 weeks pregnant and I see the struggles that she goes through on a day-to-day basis with our two-year-old kid as well. So I fully get where he's coming from, and I can really sympathise with him that it's life isn't wouldn't be easy for her doing all that by herself. So if Jack's not in the right headspace, I think he he's a smart enough person to make the call himself if he should go home or not. And if he does, <coughs> no one would be upset with it because I think we'd all understand that family comes first in that situation. So um, if he was to do that, who comes in? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd give CCJ a crack. Marbs can play forward as well. Um, from the vision I've seen of CCJ, he can take a grab as well. But um, yeah, I, I do think we need some a bit more better output from, from Jack, though. I'd like to see him really step that up in the next week or two if he's committed to staying. Just to defend Jack here a little bit, what people lose sight of, he's been our captain for the last three weeks, right? He's out of form. I'm not going to say it here and say he's not. But he's been our captain for the last three weeks. Um, what I really saw against North, he actually didn't just sit in the forward pocket out of form. And he actually w- went out into the back line. There was a lot of kicks he took from the back line, try to get within the game. What people forget too is if you drop him, he, he takes the best defender. Either if it's not the best defender, it's the second best defender because he's that crafty. So if you remove him, not only do you lose Jack's leadership, that obviously he's, he's it's impacting the team because – we're winning. Um, as captains get crucified when we lose, you've got to give them an acknowledgement when we win. Um, but also, too, is, is then the second best defender is going to hop on a chole or is going to hop on whoever's or CCJ. So um, I would, if his mind's right to play, and I actually think it is, I think he's over all that. Um, the reason why is he wouldn't be doing his show on SEN that he did today. It was a great show, by the way. But... Um, if he wasn't in the right headspace um, to play games of football. Um, so because of his wife and all that sort of stuff. I just think he's out of form. He's working his way through it. But his leadership is invaluable and we actually need him because he he keeps Lynch's defender honest. Yeah, no, fair enough. I, I, I want to see him do well. And he is working harder. There's no doubt about he's it. So hopefully hard. that reward for effort comes. It will uh, come. Next one's for you, Tiggs, from David Millett. Hi, boys. What do we... It kind of ties into what CB was talking about as well. But, uh, hi, boys. What do we think about Asprey coming in this week for Caddy and Bolter moving to the wing? Yeah, I'm a little bit different from CB. Um, I agree with him in part. Like, I'm super excited to get the 2017 defence back together again. I So, with Bolter set a half back, you got Asprey full back. We'll keep Broad. Broad doesn't go to the ring. Broad stays in there. Vloston stays in there. Um, and then you've got short, um, egg stays in there, and then you've got short. Um, so, uh, what I, and obviously, Velocity. So, what I actually think two things might be happen um, to answer your question is we might actually move Velocity into the guts. My feeling, my reason for that is, is that I know Hardwick's always wanted Velocity to play midfield, right? It's always wanted it. I think when they have play training, whatever it is, he plays in the guts. Right, um, he's always wanted to try, but he never had the tank to play in the gut. So, I could actually see 
um, giving Vlosten some midfield time while Caddy's down. Or they might do um, if they. So what I mean by that is they bring Mod um, Vlosten in the midfield, so that allows us to play another kid like a Nash or a Dow on the wing to replace a like for like, so it'll replace Caddy. So we've got a bit of speed and spread. Or they might go, okay, if, if Nash is not ready and um, Dow's not ready yet, and they want to hold the integrity of the back line, they might go, okay, Vlosten, go in in the spurts, bench either a push short or egg onto a wing, um, and Vlosten um, stays in the back line. Um, or do a mix of both. Like, you know, the times of Lawson's in the guts, you've got Egg and Short in the back. The times Lawson's back in the guts, well, depending on how the game's going, then you've got um, either Short or Egg on the wing. Um, so, yeah, I hope that answers your question in a roundabout. I don't think we'll move Bolter from the wing. I think he – I would love to see him. I think he's like a Richo that could run and dance along that wing. But I love the discipline he's showing. I love – I love he's obviously learnt – he's learning a lot from Leper. Keep that education on the back line going. All right, this is last, invaluable for him. And the last question I'll take is from David Mills. Uh, on Shea Bolton, will he now be a permanent midfielder? How long is this young Jets contract? He's an absolute gun. Um, he is an absolute gun. He showed on the weekend. Uh, he's contracted until 2021. Uh, so I would like to think the Tigers are, are well into talks with Ralph Carr about getting his contract extended. Uh, he's definitely ticking all the boxes, isn't he, to, uh, to get yeah. a nice, healthy extension. But I've said for a long time now, and just on the back of watching a few VFL games, that he 100% plays his best football as a midfielder. Uh, you, the numbers spoke for themselves. He was always getting 20, you know, 25 plus touches, clearances, goals. I know VFL is different to AFL, but you could just see that that's where his natural ability was. Um, I think Hardwick's pretty much said, though, that when we've got, when we've got a full-strength team, he may not be in that starting midfield brigade because he's got to build his tank up a bit more. But as time goes on, he'll 100% find himself there as a starting midfielder. That That's his spot. Um, and resting half forward or on the bench if he's, if he's busted a gut. But uh, yeah, really loving his work at the moment. He's just so hard to catch in traffic. All right, so that wraps up the listeners' questions for the week. Thank you to everyone for sending those through. Much appreciated. Um, and yeah, always... Feel free to shout out any other questions you got during the week. We'll make sure we get to as many as we can. But now it's the grand final rematch this week, guys, against the GWS Giants. Um, huge game. I mean, really, we always seem to catch teams when it's their season yeah. on the line, which really shits me because <laughs> it gives them something to play for. And yeah. we obviously got away with... I mean, our, our team, we're running on depth at the moment, and against North, we got away with it. I'm not fully convinced we'll be able to pull the same trick off against the Giants. They just got that star power across the park, but what they're lacking is cohesion and playing as a team, as Brett Delidio pointed out today uh, pretty savagely. Um, what what are we thinking for this game, CB? How do you see us going against the Giants, especially on, on their home deck? Well, the funny thing is, if you look at the numbers uh, from last week, if you just look purely on the disposals, you would have thought, without looking at the scoreline, you would have actually thought the Giants would win. Um Across most of the uh, numbers, disposal efficiency, 71% against the uh, lines at 73. Efficiency inside 50, just under uh, just under 59%, say 59% versus 46%. So they actually had a higher efficiency than the Lions. Um, they, they basically broke even in hitouts, broke even in the clearances. Actually, in the centre clearances, beat Brisbane 16 to 8 Whereas Brisbane got them in the stoppage clearances around twenty one to twenty eight, uh, twenty eight to twenty one. Um, a lot of the numbers, GWS were ahead of, and they were the numbers that you sort of need to be ahead of to win a game of footy. Yet somehow they lost. Um, I agree. I think we're catching them at a really shitty time on their home deck. Uh, Cameron again. Cameron's been pretty quiet, so we're going to have to really put some work into him. And I think that's why Asprey. Who do you think, boys? Do you reckon Asprey's going to take? Cameron, or do you think we we actually put Bolter on him? So I'd go Bolter. Got three, they've, got, they've got three mobile. So I think Asprey's going to have to take it. They've got, they've got three mobile forwards. You've got Himmelberg. Uh, you've got Cameron. And who's the other fella? Uh, number 31. Really good oh, forward. Finlayson. Finlayson. Finlayson, Finlayson. Finlayson yeah. yeah. He's, he, he's, the, he's the weakest out of the three. I reckon they'll do what they did. In the, they'll put Grimes, I reckon, on him. Grimes on Cameron. Because um, he can match him with mobility, and Grimes got a beautiful mark and a beautiful, and he's got his leap. You can match him for leap. They'll put Asprey on Himmelberg, and they'll rotate off. 
So if Himmelberg goes too far out of the 50, then Vlostern or someone else will go in and because Vlostern plays taller or broad or someone will run with him. Um, that's the beauty of ours. I don't think they're going to be a set person. It's whoever's going to get off the chain in whatever position that they're in. That's when they'll flow off. But I actually am bullish about this game. I saw all of that Brisbane tense of why that stats the GWS look, you know, should have won the game. They played selfish football. They played, um, okay, each individual trying to win the game, like Brett Deledio said, um, they did stupid entries into their 50, like like stupid entries, kicks they shouldn't have taken, up, wrong decisions, so turned the ball over. Um, they didn't look much chop. They looked really out of confidence. They did have a period where the old GWS came into a fall where they connected really well. But that faded pretty quick as soon as a bit of pressure. And that's their weakness at the moment. Any team that's brought the heat, North, when they beat them, brought physical pressure onto them, closed their space down, they crumbled. Brisbane brought a lot of the heat. They turned the ball over. That's their Achilles heel this year. Any team that can bring the heat can crack their code. And I reckon we can bring the heat. If we bring the same amount of heat that we brought against North, I reckon we're going to go a long way to win this game. And I reckon our boys are primed to actually get out of Queensland for a little bit. Play in the well, sun. I think um, that the one area we're going to get him is actually in the ruck because Mumford can't jump. He's a big lumbering oh, yeah. dud, right? So he's a dud now. I guess he was formidable a few years ago. But Soldo will go over the top of him. And I think you know, Ch- Chol, both our ruckmen can go over the top of him, jump over the top. So that's going to give us a pretty good uh, advantage at the centre at the centre uh, ball-ups. And I think that's where the secret of the game is, you know, if we can get that ball moving quickly into our forward line, we can then lock it in just like we did against North and just pepper away till we finally get a goal. But that is where I see their biggest weakness is in the ruck. That's where I think we can get them. Yeah, my worry is their midfield, though. Their midfield is scarily good. Like, I mean, scarily good. And our midfield is our weakest component at the moment, even though we're all good kids. And what we really need, if our half forward support the midfield, um, we should break even. We've, the, the, mark my words, we will only win this game if we force them on to turnover. If we, if they get sent and clear and straight kick down down the line to a leading target and hits them on the tip, we're going to get done. But that's the only way I can see them consistently scoring because I, I'm going to sound really um, bullish, but I reckon with Ashbury coming in, it completes our defence. With Bolter, we've got we've got. Bolter that can cover someone that's mobile. We've got Grimes that can cover someone that's mobile. We've got Broad that can co- cover mobility. We've got good lockdown defenders in Ashbury as well as Grimes. Vlossen can do a lockdown on a small. We've got so many tools in our back line to contain their three forwards. Toby Brown um, comes back as well. So yeah, no, he, he, no. He, he, is he confirmed? I don't think he's... Oh, he's not confirmed? Oh, no, he's not confirmed. Oh, okay. I thought he was... Oh, that'd be... I mean, I don't want injury on anyone, but it'd be handy for us if he didn't come back in. Yeah, and you've got, um, but and also too, in a way, they're a known quantity for us. They've they're not smashed as, with injuries like we are. So they've got all the players that have got to get get a get a lead on. Um, with ours like Shy Bolton, they're not going to know that. You know, give him a blink, give him a second, he's going to blink past you, race into goal. You know what I mean? So um, it's going to be interesting to how we play. It's going to be a litmus test. If we win this, you watch out the media, fucking peons. If we win this, you watch them. Top four, Richmond's, that's it. Flag favourites, that's it. We're flag favourites. If we lose this, oh, Richmond, um, yeah, they'll make the eight, but, you know, they're done. Yeah. That's what will happen. But it, I reckon we're good enough. My concern is our ability to score. Um, just because of the form Jack's in, if he doesn't get dangerous, then Phil Davis is just going to zone off and cover Lynch and double team. And I think that could hurt us massively. But I'd actually really like to see us try to try to deliberately hit Jack up the first few times yeah. we go inside 50, get I've a couple of that. goals on the board and really make them have to worry about, like in the yeah. grand final, make them actually have to make a decision of who to go to. Because yeah. if we make it too easy for him, Davis is a, is a great defender and he'll just zone off, re-rolled if he has to and go he's to Lynch. A, so. But Davis is out of form at the moment. He's, he's, he's not in great... Their, their defence isn't in great form. But I suppose that's, that. that's only if they're having to be accountable. If he doesn't have to worry too much about Jack, which sounds semi-disrespectful in some ways, but if he's not getting dangerous, then he might be able to regain some confidence and form zoning off. So that's I know, that's my only concern. And the other thing I took out of the Giants game, because I watched it as well, is if you notice when they've got the ball in the back half, 
or Lockie Whitford in particular, he'll do this little 20 to 25 metre kick and he'll burst yep. past them and get the handball receive and go for another yep. kick. He did it yep. time and time again and no one from Brisbane picked up on it, which was remarkable. So hopefully our guys are switched on and don't let him get that free run and carry because he's their go-to player with the ball movement coming out of the back half because he's such a good kick of the ball. Um, so just I, keep an eye on that one. I just hope they continue. If they do the um, inside 50s like they did against Brisbane, we'll win by 100 points. They kept on kicking it high and long. If they keep on doing that, our, our defenders will easily mark it and spoil and we'll run it out um, and we'll just rebound all day. But in saying Jack, Jack, this is the perfect game for Jack to get back into form um, because Davis has nightmares. Jack is sort of like a kryptonite to Davis, always plays well on him, always, and smashed him in the grand final, absolutely pillared him. So Granted I hope Davis should have played, but yeah, he did. Yeah, apart. No, but no, you go through that white line, you're, you're – Fit True. to go, yeah, right? Yeah, fair call. So, yeah, and you got to keep in mind, Jack had uh, a, a, a mere um, preliminary final. He wasn't in the best of form either, right? So um, he was sore and banged up too. So, no, I reckon, um, see, they're not going to go, okay, yeah, I hope Jack plays a perfect decoy role where or Lynch does. They're both smart forwards. Um, I hope we just play. I hope we just, you know, maybe even ignore. You know what? I'm frustrated. I'm, we've got so good long kicks in our side. I want them to, instead of just trying to hit up a forward, if the kick's not there and you're in doubt, run into the 50 and just go for a goal if you're a mid. Run into the 50 and then, then unleash. See what happens. You know what I mean? Start making their midfielders accountable. Because if, if, if we can get them accountable um, and um, defensively worried about our midfielders, that's going to change their mindset because they're a very attacking midfield. So... It's going to be a cracker game. I, I, I see it being close, to be honest. And uh, CB, oh, do, we, do we tip uh, Matt DeBoer to take Dusty again? That seems pretty straightforward. Absolutely, Adam is there to sit on him. Absolutely. And and that's to be expected. But, you know, big deal. I mean, I had DeBoer going to grand final, mate. Everyone was talking about his, his wonderful game, the previous one. Had he going to grand final when it really mattered? Dusty tore him apart. So, nah, that's to be expected. I, I, I'm okay with that. But I'll tell you the other thing as well. The uh, the Giants, that was a bruising. They've had two bruising games too. They've played Port, which was a hard physical contest, and the Lions. That was that was a that game was that both teams absolutely they cracked in. So the Giants themselves have had a pretty tough, pretty tough run. And I just think if we can bring that intensity, like we did with North, just smashing and bash them, we we could get on top of them not quickly, but it could be enough to just. Set set the game up for us, and then we can control it for the rest. You know, for the for the other two or three quarters. All right, now the million dollar question: the tips and margin. We should start keeping proper record of this, shouldn't I? Just to hold everyone accountable. <laughs> Especially with the earlier in the season outlandish ones. <laughs> That's right, CB. <laughs> now, but look, oh, Twitter will keep. The t- Twitter, t- <laughs> Twitter will keep us honest. Twitter will keep us honest. All right, what's your tip? T seventy one. Now you put all the pressure on me, brother. Um, <laughs> 22 points, Richmond's way. All right, CB. Look, you've got to be responsible with this stuff, guys. So I'm going to say oh. 72 points. Richmond. <laughs> He's got dementia. Let him try. You want to answer again, man? I 72 think... points, Richmond's way. You sure? Okay. We're, going to, we're going to end. And the funny thing about this, if we win this game, we effectively stuff this. We actually end GW season pretty much if we it's win great. this one. Yeah, it's it's really... So, so the... To, to knock a serious player out who can come good at the end of the year, critical game for us to win because it really takes out uh, a pretty big player at, at, at the other end of the season. So yeah. we need to get this one. We really and that's what worries me on the flip side is they've got absolutely everything to play for. So it should be a cracking game and hopefully the boys can get over the line. I'll say Richmond by 11 points. I think it's going to be a really close contest. Yeah, we'll um, be remiss. We'll be remiss if we don't say this too, fellas. Um, and we wouldn't do this. I um, wouldn't. I wouldn't um, miss out on this opportunity. Um, if you're an Essendon supporter or a Carlton supporter, suck a bag of dicks. <laughs> That's all I say. Love the fact. Love the result against Port. Wonderful. <laughs> Nothing's better than watching Carlton lose by a couple of points or a kick when they fuck up. It's just great, mate. The garlic sauce. I, I'm not allowed to go to Carlton because it's out of my zone, but I could smell the garlic sauce just explode in a puff of like a nuclear cow, cloud. And with the Essendon supporters, you know they all come with that little head wobble. Oh, we've got Blake Carousello. We're like Richmond now. Hey, sorry to tell you, Bombers, we could never beat Bulldogs. <laughs> it was probably all Blake's fault. 
And, um, yeah, you can see the peptides just – a river of peptides just went down the Mooney Ponds lake, mate, when they lost. It was just brilliant to see. The suck right. a bag of dicks, Thomas. <laughs> Uh, and a reminder for everyone listening out there, you can find us on Twitter at BF Tigercast on Facebook, which is under Big Footy Tigercast. Uh, you can listen to us on iTunes, Spreaker, YouTube, Spotify, and if you are any of those channels, make sure you like and subscribe to the channels. We thank you for your support as always. Uh, yeah, well, on, I, I was just going to say, sometimes I just like to put iTunes, Spreaker, YouTube, Spotify all at once. So I've got like, this big wall of sound of just Tig's voice. <laughs> Just like surround sound is hitting me from all angles while he just abuses Tim Gossage. It's amazing. Yeah, so make sure you yeah, tune in, crank it right up. Uh, but yeah, thank you for everyone's support. So, CBT71, thank you so much for your time tonight, guys. Um, and I just sort of touched on at the start of the show, rest in peace, Shane Tuck. Uh, and thoughts go out to the family, friends, and the footy club yeah. again. So, hopefully, the boys can get up and, and get a win for him this week and the family. No doubt they'll. All be thinking of him and wearing the black armbands, and they'll they'll pay him the respect he deserves, no doubt. You're uh, a legend, so, Tucky. Absolutely, no, we love you, Tucky. And uh, till next time, go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Richmond Big Footy Tiger Cast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and YouTube so you can follow all the roasts and toasts, the reviews and previews, and all topics Richmond. Also keep an ear out for our special episodes of interviews with past players. Go Tigers!